Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to transform photos into powerful abstract expressionist portrait paintings. Open a photo you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. I provided a folder in which I've assembled 10 abstract expressionist textures that I gleaned from BrushEasy.com that you could use for this project. The folder's link is in this video's description or project files. The first step is to crop our photo to a size and position we like. Open your crop tool and the crop presets. Click the width, height, and resolution. It could be any size you like. However, if we want it cropped to a specific width or height, just type it into the respective field and leave the other field empty so we're free to adjust its aspect ratio. Make its resolution 150 pixels per inch so you can use the same filter setting amounts I'll be applying in this video. Drag the corners of the crop's bounding box in or out. Drag the photo into position. When you're happy how it looks inside the bounding box, make sure Delete Crop Pixels is checked and press Enter or Return or click the check mark at the top. To zoom into your image, press Ctrl or Command and the plus key on your keyboard or press Ctrl or Command 0 to fill your canvas with it. To see your image at 100%, press Ctrl or Command 1. Before we continue, if you'd like to be notified as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, click that subscribe button and welcome. We'll separate our subject from its background. Open the Quick Selection tool and click the Select Subject button, which automatically places a selection around our subject. This was first introduced in CC 2018. If you're using an earlier version, just drag the tool over your subject to select it. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those unwanted areas. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut and copy your subject onto a new layer. Hide the background. We'll remove the color from our subject by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift U. Go to Filter. Sharpen and Unsharp Mask. This filter works by adding clarity and contrast to the photo. It automatically detects what it believes are edges within the picture and increases their contrast, which produces a sharper looking image. Make the amount 100%, the radius 10 pixels, and the threshold 10 levels. Go to Filter. Stylize and oil paint. Make the stylization 4, the cleanliness 2, the scale 10, and the bristle detail 10. Make sure lighting is unchecked. As I click the preview window off and on, we can see the difference in our image with and without the oil paint effect. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Posterize. Make it four levels. We'll make three copies of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J three times. Name the top copy black, the next copy dark, the next one medium, and the bottom one white. Temporarily hide the bottom three and make the top layer active. Go to Select and Color Range. Make the fuzziness 40 and tick Image. Click any black area and click OK. This selects just the black shapes of our image. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. Make the layer below it visible and active. Go back to Select and Color Range. Tick Image and click any area that's dark but not black. As before, click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. 
make the medium layer visible and active, and go to Select and Color Range. Tick Image, and click the next lightest area. Make a layer mask of the selection, and repeat the same steps for the white shapes of your subject. Make the top layer active, and go to File, and place Embedded. Navigate to the Textures folder I provided, or you could use your own textures if you like. Click the texture you'd like to use for the black areas of your subject, and click Place. Go to a corner, and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag it out. Then press Enter or Return. We want the texture to show through the white areas of the layer mask directly below it. To do this, we need to make the texture into a clipping mask. There are a few ways to do this, but for now, go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. You could also press alt Control g on Windows or option Command g on a Mac. Since this texture is replacing the black areas of our subject, we want it to be the darkest of all the textures we use. We can adjust the color, brightness, tones, and contrast of any of the textures if we want. There are a number of adjustment layers that we could use alone or in combination with others. Click the Adjustment Layer icon. For this texture, a click Color Balance. It's important to know that adjustment layers affect all the layers below them in the Layers panel. If we want an adjustment layer to affect just the one layer below it, we'll need to clip it or restrict it to that layer. Click the Clipping Mask icon, or go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. I'll open the Tone list and click Shadows. Since I want the shadows of this texture to be bluish-green in color, I'll type in minus 100 for the cyan and red. For the magenta and green, I'll type in 82, and for the yellow and blue, 35. Feel free to adjust the colors for your texture. I'd like the midtones to be bluer, so I'll type in minus 100 for the cyan and red, and I'll type in 100 for the yellow and blue. If you want to adjust the brightness and contrast of the shadows, midtones, and highlights within the colors, click the Adjustments tab. If you don't see it, go to Window and Adjustments. Click the Levels icon. Clip it to the layer below it. For the input midtones, I'll type in 0.72, and for the output white level, I'll type in 178. The further we drag the output white slider, the darker our image appears. This is because the white output level controls how light the lightest toned in the image can be. In this instance, I'm restricting the lightest tone to be gray. Conversely, the further we drag the output black slider, the lighter our image appears. As with any of the adjustment layers, feel free to play with the amounts to get the look you want. We'll place the top four layers into a folder by shift-clicking the black subject layer to make all the layers active, and pressing Ctrl or Command G. Name it Black. Make the dark subject layer active, and go to File, and place Embedded. Click a texture you'd like to use for the dark tones of your subject, and click Place. Drag out the texture, and press Enter or Return, or click the check mark. Clip this texture to the layer directly below it. Since this texture is filling the dark tones of our subject, I'd like to darken it. Keep in mind, if you choose a texture that's consistently dark throughout, you won't have to add an adjustment layer to darken it. I'll click the Adjustment Layer icon, click Levels, and clip it to this texture. I'll make the output white level 196. Shift-click the dark subject to make it and the texture active as well, and group the three layers into a folder. Name it Dark. Make the medium layer active, and go to File, 
and place Embedded. Click the texture you want to use for the medium tones of your subject and click Place. Fill your subject with a texture and clip it to the medium subject layer. I'll click the adjustment layer icon and click Levels. I'll clip it to the texture and make the output black level 116 to lighten this overall texture. Keep in mind we can always reposition, rotate, or resize any of our textures. Just make that texture active and open the Transform tool. Play with its angle, position, and or size. Place those three layers into a folder and name it Medium. Make the white subject layer active, place a texture over your document, and clip it to the white tones of your subject. I'll add a Levels Adjustment layer and slide across the output black level to make that texture lighter. Lastly, we'll add the background texture. After you group the layers that comprise the white tone into a folder, make the background active and place another texture onto your document. Size it up, and as with all the textures, feel free to adjust its color, brightness, contrast, and tone. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.